Volkswagen's our 2010 Renault Master medium wheelbase, medium roof, kart racing van. One of the most versatile vans you'll ever see, honestly. So, uh, in metallic silver, um, 111 and a half thousand miles on at the moment. We've got one more race to do in it, which will put about a thousand miles on. So it's going to be about 12 and a half thousand. And this will be for sale at the end of um, September. So, starting with it overall, so compared to your sprinters and crafters, it's not a rust bucket. The Renaults don't rust, but not in a big way anyway. The odd chip and mark on the van on a few panels, just like you would get in the paddock, and that's to be expected of a van of this age, which is nine years old and of the mileage. Um, last year I got some uh, alloy wheels off the Sport model, uh, genuine Renault alloys. I had them all refurbished at the moment they were marked on curved. Hopefully they'll stay that way for the month. We've got four really good tyres, they're all matched, they're not remoulds or anything. They are all Uni Royal Rain Max 2s with decent tread all the way around. That's on all four wheels. No cracks in the glass or anything like that. Uh, big side door, advantage over the smaller transit that the side door on the Renault Master goes all the way to the top so you can get a car in through the side door vertically. You can't really do that on, uh, on any of the transits. So like I say, medium wheelbase, this is 10 millimeters under 5 meters. So it's 4.990 meters long. And I believe if it's under five meters, even by the mill, you get slightly cheaper if you ever need to take it on a ferry, which is why we bought it. Double doors at the back, again, full height, really good condition, good plastic work, parking sensors at the back. On this side, it's just a bit that side. What we've got is a 240 volt, 16 amp input standard socket. So if you're at a track where you want to hook any electricity up, you can do that and hook that up here. Inside, fairly standard. Um, this van's got no aircon, so pros and cons. Obviously, for the two months of the year when you'd like aircon, it's a bit of a pain, you've got to open the window a little bit. For every other month, nothing to go wrong, no condenser unit to go wrong, no pump to feel. Um, if you've been running the, you know, if you, if you get aircon and you do it on a long journey, when you get up the next day, it fills the cabin full of moisture and you always get stained up windows. None of that has got electric windows. It's got TomTom Tom factory built-in sat-nav, which is up here. It's quite old, but it's very good. It's actually one of the best systems I've used. It's, the screen's a bit small, but it's still way better than uh, any of the standard offerings from VW Audi and any of the Golfs or anything like that. Uh, it's got the standard radio cassette, uh, sorry, radio CD player, which has got Bluetooth hooked up to my iPhone, which is an iPhone 8, eight no problem. Uh, just a little mount for the dash. That screen comes with a remote control, which a lot of the Renault Masters that get sold second-hand don't come with, or they've been lost. This one's got it. Lots of service history. This van gets serviced every year, whether it needs it or not. Um, several new parts on the van. New window regulator on the driver's side, genuine Renault part. Uh, new front caliper on one side, new wheel bearing on one side, new bottom wheel ball joint on one side, uh, new handbrake cable lines to the back. Whatever this van's ever needed, we've done to it preemptively or you know nothing's ever broken down we're always going to check out and get it done straight away because we can't afford for it to break down when we go racing so this van is in really good condition you hear a lot of things with the Renault Master guys and the Sprinter guys reckoning they're getting like 35 mile a gallon it's a load of rubbish this does about 30 mile a gallon 29.9 mile a gallon fully loaded if you drive it carefully by carefully I mean don't go over 60 you go 70 or a little bit more you'll get about 27.9 mile a gallon absolutely fully loaded and uh, the average amount of gallons uh, on the screen to prove it. I use this as a daily driver, so it never spends big periods of time sitting doing nothing. Um, but overall, just look around the front, it's in really good condition. No spotlights or anything to get broken or smashed, nothing that's going to cost you money. And overall, it's in really good condition. Okay, so double doors at the back, fairly standard, and you see inside it's fairly clean. So what we've got is we've got shelving on this side of the van, this, all the shelving has been made out of um, birch marine ply, 18mm thick with a special coating. Uh, a lot of people call it buffalo board or they do where I'm come from. Uh, up here it's called by its trade name tech board or something like that. I've designed the shelving so it all fits your standard sizes for your really useful boxes of which they're all there. They'll all come with a van. It comes with a compressor. Now there's no onboard power for that as such, so if you have a generator, you just plug it in the side and that's already wired in just to run. 
We do have 12 volt outputs, but I'll show you that in a bit where you can use another compressor which will come with a van just to uh, increase your tyre pressures, but obviously you can't blow a tyre on the rim. You would need that one for that. Uh, fire extinguisher, some leveling blocks. And now there's enough room in this van, you can set it up a number of ways. We use, you've got one car vertically here, one car vertically here. So two carts as standard. You can also fit a third cart on this wall, on the back wall. We've usually got our own in here, engine boxes there, tyre bags all stacked and tyre driven cart trolleys. So this is a big space. Now, when we look for a van, the problem is with the masters and the sprinters that are converted, the garage is just too small. You can fit one cart in, no spares, no gear, decent living accommodation, but that's it. So what makes this van so special is, not only is it a medium wheelbase van, you can fit everything you'd ever need to in. So you can fit three carts in and your own and and a generator and all your tyres and all of your spares but it's got a combination as well so if you see here what you're losing out your medium wheelbase is roughly 10 inches and that's all of your living space so what we've got around here we've got a couple of levers so what you do is you get to where you want to go you get to the track and the first thing you do is you take your awning out and you just put your you put your awning up you put your tyres away you can put your carts in the awning then the space is cleared you get four wheels here on this board. So this slides backwards and locks in to position in the top. And it locks in position at the bottom. These little levers take pressure off the wheels so when you're sitting on the other side which I'll show you in a little bit it doesn't do any damage to the bulkhead. You know the LED lights in here it's 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, there's 9, 8, 9 LED lights in here all run off a leisure battery in the front. This van has a split charger so around the front when it's back this becomes your little living little accommodation. I've got ratchets here undo this lock do this lock and that becomes the base of your sofa. Just give this a second. Undo this ratchet and this ratchet, this same latch. And what you have here is a sofa. So we've got a 12 volt TV here which is built in DVD player. You have a little shelf, make your dinner on it, do your cooking, something like that. Um, so take your bed and put it underneath until you're ready to go to sleep in the night. So, ready to go to bed in the night, you lift this up, it's easy just to do it this way initially. A couple of carabiners and a couple of loops, loop this up here, and if that one, loop this into this little uh, island, like that one, you put your bed back down. So, bed for the child, bed for the uh, dad, lad and dad car, and all sorted. Just enough room for you to get ready, get changed and whatnot. This is quite dark, it's nice and cool, you get a really, really good nice sleep in it. Got a circulating air vent on the top of the van, that takes away any moisture, no wet bedding, no condensation running down the windows, and uh, everything you needed to do, everything you needed to do. You've got 12 volt outputs here, and USB sockets, you can charge your phones up. Uh, there's a switch for the TV, and there's a switch for the lights in the inside. One of those is spare, you can add something on later on. In here is where you have your leisure battery, if we look in there. So in here we've got a split charger, so it charges the leisure battery as you drive. A set of fuses for the various items. There's a charger for that battery, so if you get to on site and you plug in uh, to the hookup, there's a charger will charge the battery as well so for whatever reason it's not being charged and um, you can off the uh, split charger you can charge it off the mains as well there should be enough room in there to put um, a night heater if you wanted to do that we've never felt the need and haven't bothered and like i say tv can run out off either 12 of 240 or 12 volt at the moment i've just got to run off 12 volts Carbon monoxide alarm just in case you want to run a gas heater or anything like that and there's a four bar socket up here which if we've got hook up we can run a uh, we've got a little 2000 watt electrical heater which plugs into there and that will go with the van as well it's just as easy as putting it out so um, what we tend to do is put the bedding just in the front 
Um, undo the first one. Undo the second one. Put these two together, just rub it all around. You've also got the um, you've got the space above the cabin here. You put clothes, bedding, pillows, anything like that. Bottom mid goes up. So this is at the end of your carton weekend. What we tend to do is as soon as we get up on the Sunday, we will do this and put this load, this um, false panel away, false bulkhead away. So when we finish racing, we can just start loading the van straight up. So, so this is all on wheels, goes forward really easy. Push it forward, it's fine. Go, lock these in place. And then you're good to go. Ratchet straps here already for the new one. Ratchet straps even here. Put a car vertically here. Right here. So for ultimate first into the video, let's say you're just going uh, for a testing weekend. You're not going to stay. You don't intend to get to bed now. You don't want to take engines off. You don't want to take bumpers off to put bumpers on. You don't want to put them in hold. You want to put them in the hold. Leave if you don't know what the call to call shoring falls and all of the ratchet straps that you have to put Leave if you don't know what the call to call shoring falls and all of the ratchet straps and all that mechanism has been designed so these poles will fit in these will also come with a van I have three of them these are quite expensive hundred pound a pair something like that and they will go in there so your car can go in here with your car trolley tires anything else underneath it you can get a full size cart on here what you can also do depending on where you put the shore and poles you can have a cadet cart three at a time Vertically resting on bar one, vertically resting on bar two, vertically resting on bar three. So you can fit three connect carts in here. And if you flatten the nassos, you could probably fit um, three full size carts in as well and still have all of this room at the front for all the rest of your gear and still have your accommodation. Really versatile amp. We have, uh, like I see the compressor here, we also have the pull out. This is a 10 meter line. Uh, we'll go into your awning from the back of the van. We've got an air gun on it, a glow gun, and we've got a uh, tire inflator. Now the tank that's on the compressor is big enough, so if you charge that up before you go away, it's pretty much enough for a test day to go up and down in the pressures on your tires. Got a hose, uh, so you can take a jet wash. Um, first aid kit usually go in here. Like I say, this is just a level it out, so it's far from the hill, you can level it up to make sleeping a bit more comfortable. Fire extinguisher always there in the back of the van, just in case. There's a pole here which we use to stack our weight for our order. We use a gala 6 meter by 3 meter order, which conveniently I've designed it so it fits in that front space in between the wheels exactly and then just gets strapped to that board. So, overall, a really good van. You'll see a lot of sprinters and a lot of crafters where people are advertising saying, I've done it, only used once. I've only used it once because there's not enough room and I can't carry all the stuff. We'll be off to Shenandoah in a few weeks time for the last race of the season and at the end of that weekend that will mark our 100th night in this van and if you consider as a carton lad and dad if you're saving 100 pound a night and we've slept 100 nights in this van so we've proved that it works and it's completely viable that's 10 grand uh, so the amount i'm asking for this van is pretty good you will certainly make the money back then and a bit more so um, you know get in touch if it's something you're interested in